Okay, we begin with uh, John. John, the self-centered and uh, a man that has what we call an ego problem. But later on, he became the apostle of love. And God's love, <clears throat> evident in Christ Jesus, can save us, can transform us, and then can unite all believers. Next slide, by way of introduction, Jesus, after a night of prayer, he chose 12 who were his main focus to be his witnesses. So it's important for us to be praying that God will give us an inner circle, inner group of people that will get together with you, same heart, same mind, and Jesus pray, I in them and thou in me, talking to the Father, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So we need a group, one in love and one in mission, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and the passion that is involved in them. And our Savior chose 12. He knew their personality, both strong and weak. In fact, they were ordinary people. And so the Apostle Paul reminds us, God chose the foolish things, the weak things, and the base things. God has chosen so that no flesh should glory in his presence. Each of the uh, apostles, in their own way, in their own life, and also in their own death. Not what they were, but what they could become by the grace of God. Next slide. Uh, through the uh, Holy Spirit, they were transformed and they were empowered. The Holy Spirit is called a divine executive. And we'll be looking at, at the fourth session. A lot of things to work in. Because he will be the one that will strengthen us in our inner man. And though our outward man may perish, but the Holy Spirit will strengthen us. He gave us power, strength plus power. After the Holy Ghost is come unto you. We'll have a whole session just on the divine executive who is the Holy Spirit himself. Now let's look at now John the man. He's a brother uh, with James. James is the older one. And they're called the sons of thunder. So these two are fiery ex uh, with extreme reaction in their life. And they were the ones that <clears throat> partner with Peter. All right. And uh, with Peter, next to Peter, uh, 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 John, was mentioned more than of the others. In fact, uh, almost what we call 50 times. And he was uh, with Jesus in most of the event. For example, he witnessed Jesus' transfiguration where his divinity was revealed. He was sent to prepare the Last Supper and he later inclined next to Jesus. He was given the responsibility to take care of Jesus' mother. And then he was at a tomb <clears throat> and, and uh, expressed faith by seeing and believing that Jesus is risen. Then he witnessed the miracle of the catch of fish after Jesus' resurrection. There were many signs that uh, uh, John <clears throat> wrote for example, he talks about the son of uh, the, the sign, the water changing into wine, the healing of the uh, uh, official son, the man that was 38 years uh, uh, waiting in a pool, he was healed, uh, the feeding of 5,000 with five loaves and, uh, and two fishes. He walked on the Sea of Galilee. Our Savior is the God of nature. And then the blind man was healed. And then above all, he raised up Lazarus. Those were the signs. 
But the greatest sign, the final sign, is the sign of the resurrection. And so uh, uh, John saw and he believed. And then later on, he was at a seaside with Peter after Jesus rose up from the dead and Jesus fed them. Next slide. One of the pillars of the church. He had the privilege to be one of the pillars of the church. He healed and he preached. Then he was exiled to an island called Patmos. And he wrote the Gospel of John. And wrote John chapter 1, chapter 2, I mean John 1, 2, and 3. Those are the uh, letters of love. And he wrote the book of Revelation. I, John, who also am your brother, companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patient of Jesus Christ, was in the house of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at his character. All right, <clears throat> next slide. <clears throat> character. Very vengeful and very fiery. And when the <clears throat> disciples uh, saw that as Jesus was going into, uh, uh, into Jerusalem, the Samaritans did not want to open their homes to uh, Jesus Christ. So James and John, the two uh, sons of thunder, they saw this. They said, Lord, Will you, will you then command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? So <clears throat> vengeful and fiery, sons of thunder, James and John. Now our Savior <clears throat> rebuked them. Our Savior said, you don't even know the kind of spirit that uh, you have, and the kind of spirit that you should be having. Then they were so judgmental. And uh, <clears throat> there were people that were casting out names uh, in Jesus' name. And then John uh, answered Jesus and said, Master, we saw one casting out demons in your name. And he followed on us. And so we forbade him because he followed not us. Judgmental. All right, very quick into that. And then we read the next one. Uh, he is very selfish, all right, <clears throat> character, selfish, power hungry. And James and John, again, two brothers, they came to Jesus and said, Master, we would that thou would do for us what we shall desire. And the Lord said, hey, what is it that I should do to you? And they said unto him, run unto us that we may sit, one on your right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. Selfish, self-centered, and power hungry. And then next slide shows to us, number four, and yet the, the bonus that were there, and they saw the bonus of John and Peter because they were filled now with the Holy Spirit and they were bold after Pentecost. And we're going to look at that more in detail. And they saw that uh, John and uh, Peter, uh, excuse me, Peter and John were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and took knowledge of them, but they had been with Jesus and compassionate. And we have known and believed the love that God had for us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So he was compassionate and is now the apostle of love. Now let's look at the process now as we see uh, how uh, the Lord began to take hold of John. Yes, he was with the rest of the disciples. And yet there were occasions where our Savior took hold of him personally. And first of all, we find that uh, uh, he was looking for what we call a uh, compliment. Now, <clears throat> rebuke instead of compliment. He was looking for compliment. John answered, answered uh, uh, Jesus and said, Master, we saw one casting out demons in thy name, and he followed not us, and we forbid him because he followed not us. But Jesus said, forbid him not, for there is no man that shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against me 
is on our part. So here was a person that was self-serving. And he also had a jealous behavior to be great. He thought, well, we are the, in the elite group, you know. And so he was uh, trying to be wise and trying to be a lawyer to Jesus Christ and say, you know, this, this fellow is not with us and so on. And so he should not be doing that at all. But let, me, let us be reminded that Jesus can take care of his own reputation. And God can take care of, of his own reputation. But we have to do, all we have to do is to be responsible for what God wants us to do and let God take care of it. And then secondly now, it seems to me that he has been trying to compensate. Why? Because at this particular time now, people, the disciples, they were reasoning about themselves. You know, a group of uh, 12 of them, they always will be fight. They compare, contrast. And because, you know, they're all very different, different personality, different giftedness, and come from different place, different occupation, and so on. And you're trying to make a, a cohesive group out of the 12. And so uh, they always will be uh, power hungry and so on. And so what happened was this, so maybe John at this time was trying to compensate. So he was trying to work harder. He was trying to prove to himself that he was lawyer, that he was uh, <clears throat> taking care of the reputation of the group. And then he was actually taking care of Jesus because uh, <clears throat> Jesus' name was used. All right. And so our Savior rebuked him. Our Savior said, don't you forbid him. For he that is not against us is on our part. And so there's a teaching there of discernment. Next slide. Uh, that <clears throat> we need to be discerning. Uh, John said it in First John. He said, beloved, believe not every spirit, but test them. Try the spirit whether they will be of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world, and now you know the Spirit of God, every spirit that confess that Jesus is come in the flesh is of God. Other than that, you will be the spirit of anti-Christ, the process. So a rebuke was helpful. It, uh, <clears throat> it kind of... Uh, a check on the fiery, judge, judgmental character of John. The next one now is love demonstrated. Love demonstrated. All right, we think of uh, <clears throat> John 13, and you remind that uh, uh, <clears throat> our Savior, in the midst of infighting, okay, he washed the feet of the disciples. And uh, that's supposed to be the work of the slave. And that's supposed to be the work of servants with master. And Jesus was supposed to be the master of all. And so people will do what they see. And so what happened was this. Jesus had that what we call object lesson for them. So the love was demonstrated. And so after Jesus had washed their feet and taken his garment, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye not what I have done to you? All right, <clears throat> you call me master and Lord, and you say, Well, and you say, Well, for so I am, I am your master and Lord. If I then your Lord and master have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as <clears throat> I have done <clears throat> to you. So this was something that was kind of beneath Jesus to do. Because after all, you know, he's master and Lord. And sometimes we say, well, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I just want to be like Jesus, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but are we in everyday life, in our daily life, do we initiate intentionally do acts of service? This has nothing to do with possession and power and prestige and position, but the greatest of all Jesus said now is to be <clears throat> the slave, just like Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus knew who he was. He said he was uh, his security, his, his identity, because he knew that 
the father gave all things to him. He came from God and he went to God. And so he had nothing to prove, nothing to hide, nothing to lose. And so from the position of our identity in Jesus Christ, we, we know who we are and whose we are. We are loved by him. We are forgiven. We are accepted. We are complete in Christ. We are sons and daughters, the prince and princesses of the king of kings, the lord of lords. And so Jesus said now, if I wash your feet, you also ought to wash one <clears throat> another feet. And so, you know, and may I just kind of uh, <clears throat> repeat again, because I said it the last time. Usually what happened is this, that uh, uh, <clears throat> after our meetings together, when I have in-person training, we have the washing of feet to, to by, by the object lesson, me starting first to wash the feet of, uh, of uh, one of the men that were there. And then the other men and women, then they wash one another's feet. And, and I'm reminded of this man that came by and asked me to say, you know, pastor, I washed the feet of this man and I was crying away in tears. Well, why was he doing that? Because you can realize that you know how much God has done for him and Jesus has done for him. And when he's doing that, it's a very freeing experience to uh, <clears throat> know what it is to be like <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you look into the next slide now, the new commandment is given to us to love <clears throat> one another. All right. The Lord said, you love one another as I have loved you. So you also love one another. But these shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. You want to be the greatest, you be the greatest slave. The higher we go, the higher I go, we need to surrender my rights and accept my responsibility. You know, actually, the ones that go higher and higher, they have more responsibility. And they then begin to realize that they should have they should surrender their rights. If I want to rule, I must serve. If I want to live, I must put to death the flesh. If I want to be strong, I must be weak. If I want to inherit the kingdom, I must be poor in spirit. If, if I want to reproduce, I must die. <clears throat> All right? If I want to save my life, I must lose my life. If I want to be lifted up, I must humble myself. I want to be the greatest, I must be a slave. I want to be first, I must be last. And that is the way John began to understand what was going on. You see people, see what we do. And so at the end of it now, when, we, when they graduate, we give them the certificate and we give them a tower. And we tell them that, hey, when you get back with a certificate, don't go back and boast about you having a master degree and this and that and so forth. But show them a tower, use a tower so that you can wash one another's feet. Is to remind us that we should be washing one another's feet. Then thirdly, now the process. We begin to realize now <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the Lord has an order. Okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, the next slide, brother. Okay, the, the Lord has what we call a leadership order. Now, John and James, they desire to be number one, sit on the left side and the right side and so on. And uh, <clears throat> they were power hungry. But Jesus planned that he's supposed to be number two, you see? And so it's very apparent. Well, when you see uh, the disciples being uh, uh, what we call recognized together, it is always Peter and John. The first, uh, in, in the Greek uh, understanding of it, the first person mentioned, the first person mentioned is always the number one. So it's always Peter and John to prepare the, uh, the, the meal. Peter and John at the garden uh, tomb uh, <clears throat> when they saw that the tomb was empty. Peter and John 
uh, was at uh, uh, <coughs> at uh, at the uh, during Pentecost at the temple. Again, Peter and John were sent to establish the saints in Samaria. You know, there is always the tension. All right. Uh, he, now he is uh, in a supportive role. Okay, <clears throat> and less recognition. Less respect. And my friend, you can cause deep feelings of jealousy, of anger, and it can turn to bitterness, and you will destroy relationship with others and relationship with God. And then we'll be vulnerable uh, <clears throat> so that Satan can strike us with his fiery darts. My friend, they are in the Bible, many people were in what we call support role. We have, for example, uh, Joshua was support role with Moses for 40 years. And then Caleb was in the support role uh, of Joshua. All right? And uh, <clears throat> it's great. Then we have uh, Elisha supporting Elijah and so on. And so when we are in the support, and most of us are in the middle, we are in a support role. We need to learn to focus on our responsibility rather than our rights, rather than our dream. Secondly, we need to appreciate the value of our role and keep growing. And so John knew his role and he kept growing. And later on, God gave him the privilege uh, to write the gospel and John 1, 2, 3 and book of Revelation. And he was then uh, given what we call an enlarged role later on, all right? And then uh, we will find satisfaction in knowing that we are doing, we are effective, all right, in the role that we have. And God is satisfied with us. And that is uh, instead of position and title. And lastly, Hebrews 6, 10 remind us, God remember us. God remembers you, remember me when we minister to others. So the best reward comes from God and God himself. And then now we look at the, the fourth uh, event, <clears throat> the process. The fourth event, we see now Jesus gave him unconditional love. And Jesus gave him the trust and entrusted Mary to John. This event, Jesus up on the cross now, is a traumatic ex ex exam uh, event for Jesus. He was hanging on the cross, despised the man of sorrow, in agony and pain and shame. And then he saw <clears throat> Mary down below with the other three women, but he saw his own mother weeping away and so on. And Mary herself was weeping away in agony, seeing her son up on a cross, bloodied and tortured and despised and hated and shouted at and jeered at and so on and forth. But there was a change point, a dramatic change point. Why? It's a very personal and intimate change point. And our Savior saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And then say he to the disciples, Behold thy mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. All right? <clears throat> now, so, how would you feel? How would you feel? Think about it. When someone loves <clears throat> and trusts you and, and trusts some great uh, job for you to do in spite of your self-centeredness and in spite of your obnoxious behavior. And I think that it will be really disarming. It will really be humbling. It will really be life-changing. This is called, you know, unconditional, unchanging, unshackled, unselfish. And Jesus gave that to John. This is also called the expulsive power of love. 
That means that God's love, Jesus' love will expel all other idols, expel all other negative personality in our life and bring us to God and God alone. And so when you look at this next slide, we see that God loves us unconditionally, no matter how self-serving and proud we are. We have, for example, John 3, self-righteous religious leader Nicodemus was told how to be born again. A lady, immoral, Samaritan, they had five husbands, and now staying with a husband, the person that is not her husband, and yet Jesus touched her and transformed her life. The blind, they cried out, Lord, I believe. And then Thomas was a skeptic, and the Lord loved him uncon con unconditionally, and he cried out and said, my Lord and my God. So my friend, we need to put our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior, first of all. God so loved the world. That's why John writes it. He said, God so agape. God so gave himself. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in Jesus should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord says, I have appealed to you. Yes, I love you with an everlasting love. Praise God for that. The death of the love, the ultimate price, it was demonstrated on the cross. The Bible tells us while we are yet sinners, while without strength, while we are ungodly, while we are enemies of God, God commanded his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that's the first step we ought to take. If we have not trusted and believed in Jesus, we need to come by repentance and faith and believe in him because God loves us and God shone it on the cross. And Jesus died for our sins on the cross and rose up because Jesus lived, we can also live. Next principle now is number two is this. Jesus desire to have what we call a unique and reciprocal relationship with us. Behold, look at it. What manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, the children of God. The question is now, are we experiencing daily fellowship as father-child relationship? Ezra said, I prepare myself every morning to seek the Lord for greater intimacy with the Father so that we connect, we hunger, we thirst after the Lord. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And then secondly, now are we allowing him to minister to us? Sometimes, you know, we are too proud to receive from him. But the Lord said, listen to me, I'm waiting that I may be gracious to you. All right, <clears throat> I'll be exalted. I'll be merciful to you. Blessed are they that wait on the Lord. So that when you and I wait upon the Lord, we have greater intimacy. Then we will have what we call greater capacity to love him as he ministered to us and to bless him. And then God will give us what we call and last capability, greater power, greater strength, so that we can be a blessing to him. God bless us so that we can bless others. Number, next number is this now, is that we need to yield to him as he disciplines us. Because in this relationship, there will be time that we make mistakes. And then God disciplines us. And why does God discipline us? Because God, what? Love us. It's a token, an evidence. My friend, if God doesn't love us and we are not his children, then he doesn't even bother to discipline us. 
And like I told you the story again of the mother, uh, <clears throat> they came to two uh, boys that were playing in the mud in the rain. They were just throwing mud in one another. The mother took hold of one of the boys and spanked the boy hard. And the little boy cried out and said, mom, you're spanking me. Why are you not spanking the other person? The other, the other boy, the mother said, because he is not my son, you are my son. You see, it is the, the, the discipline doesn't seem to be joyous. All right? But it will yield peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness. There will be fruits. Fruits of right living, right thinking, right words, right action, and right heart. All right? And because he loves us. My friends, because he loves us, because he loves you and he loves me, he takes the circumstances of my life, uses them in a constructive way for my growth. And even when I make mistakes, he kind of uh, uh, forgive me. And then he kind of uh, sanctify it and then, and then uh, and, uh, and make it in a constructive way for my growth. Because God loves me, he does not treat me as an object to be possessed and to be manipulated. God does not possess us and ma manipulate us. Because God loves me, he does not keep score of all my sin and then beat me over the head with them wherever he gets the chance. Because God loves me, he rejoices when I experience his power and strength and stand up under the pressure of life for his name's sake. Because God loves me, he keeps on working patiently with me, even when I feel like giving up, and I can't see why he doesn't give up with me too. Praise God, he does not give up. He does not let you and I go. Because God loves me, he keeps on trusting me, when at times I, can, I can't even trust my own self. He trusts me, and then he entrusts certain things with me. And we look to the Lord and say, Lord, why are you love me so much? And why do you trust me so much? Because God loves me. He never said there is no hope for me. Rather, he patiently works with me, loves me, disciplines me in such a way that it is hard for me to understand the height and the depth and the length uh, of his love for me. Yes, my friend, the greatest of all gifts is God's perfect love for you and for me. Amen. Praise God for that. And then the next principle, number three, is this now. You see, his purpose is that he wants to have a dynamic community of love, a community that care and share so that we can meet the needs of the whole world, so that we can uh, <laughs> reach out and tell people of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so John said it again. He said, we have seen and heard. All right, we have seen Jesus, we heard from him. We declare unto you that we can also have fellowship with one another. And because our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, <clears throat> Jesus Christ. And so we can have a community. That's why even in our time together, we share and we pray for one another. When we go forth with the uh, uh, in-person training, we want to build a community of people that care and for share. And then in the church, we want people to go to church. Why? Because we must not forsake the assembly of ourselves together so that we can exalt one another. Why? Because evil days are coming. So Jesus, he wants to have a dynamic community of love. All right? To meet the needs and to reach the world. Next slide. So what are we contributing to the love and unity of the family? And John said it again. Now he said, whereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And our Savior, yes, 
The Bible tells us that though he was God, he emptied himself. He made himself of no reputation. He became a slave. And then, be, and then he, he came to, to, be, to serve and not to be served. And then finally to die for your sins and my sins on the cross. Now, in the same way, we ought to lay down our lives for one another. We ought to do good to all men. All right? Because love will produce love. Love will produce unity. Love will produce community. Love will produce witness that will be unified. And though we are of different diversity, do good unto all men. Lay down your life. That means that you do good to one another. And even sometimes some of us uh, have to be martyrs uh, for, for, for the Lord. And James talked about it. We visit the fatherless. We visit the widows in their affliction. Jesus said, those who are hungry, feed them. Those who are thirsty, give them to drink. Those who are strangers, welcome them in. Those who are naked, give them clothing. And uh, <clears throat> those who are sick, you know, <clears throat> give them uh, medicine and healing. Those who are in prison, by the grace of God, visit them and so on. And uh, that is a dynamic community of love. And people will know that we are Jesus' disciples and they will come and believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. And that's how God began to transform John, the self-centered, power-hungry, fiery, self-serving, <clears throat> into what we call the apostle of love. And, and given us, and especially in the last days now, the book of Revelation, and we praise God for that. Now, we look at another uh, uh, apostle, all right? We started with John, and now we go to Peter, because these are my favorite uh, uh, <clears throat> apostles, because my life seems to be just like John and Peter, at certain moments of my life, here is Peter. He's called what we call <clears throat> the tough minder. Let us look at uh, 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 one big uh, section of his life. And we're going to read the scriptures. Okay? And the Lord said unto Simon, 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 behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith, your faith faileth not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brother. And then uh, Peter said, oh, Lord, Lord, you know, I'm ready to go with you, both into prison and even to die for you. Uh, and Jesus prophesied to him and says, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that you shall thrice three times deny that you know me. Next slide. Then they took Jesus and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they have kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and was set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked at him and said, Hey, this man was also with him. And denying, he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. Next slide. After a while, one another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I'm not. And after a space of one hour, uh, after another confident, con confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I don't know what thou sayest. And immediately, while Peter yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked uh, upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how the Lord had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept 
bitterly. Now we look at a process. We saw uh, <clears throat> the process, just like John went through the process and different part of the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, journey. But we're gonna look at this last part of the journey where Peter was broken, broken at the end of it. This last part of it is a sad failure. It is so in detail. There are 52 verses in the Bible about that. And so we need to pay attention, all right? Why? Because it is striking in the midst of the story of the greatest tragedy, of the greatest tragedy of the cross. In the midst of it, we find the story of a set failure. So another reason why, next uh, uh, thing, the next slide there, is that this case is not kind of uh, isolated, all right? It's not unusual. Why? Because the Bible is full of story and it's the stories largely of failures. Adam believed, failed, disobeyed. Noah, he <clears throat> was a drunkard. Abraham <clears throat> lied <clears throat> twice. Then we have got Moses that uh, uh, <clears throat> was a man of anger and he was a murderer. And David was supposed to be a king, a doubter, and also a murderer. So it's a warning, it's a solemn warning. Let's read that together. Wherefore, let him that fingered his tender take heed lest he would fall. <clears throat> that means God is reminding us all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the temptation is the same for every man because we, are deep, we have a depraved heart and we can fall anytime. And we boast that we can stand, we will fall. Because from our heart, we have evil thoughts. It comes out covetousness, sexual sins, lustful thoughts, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. And all these things uh, come from our heart. And, uh, and then it uh, destroys our lives. But then God is faithful. He will not suffer us to be tempted above we are able, but will with the temptation also make for us a way to escape that you may be able to bear. God has a remedy. He is faithful and trustworthy. He will make a way and escape for us. Now let's look now at the character of Peter so that we can see more and more about his life. Look at him. Character. It's very impulsive. A very impulsive character. All right. <clears throat> Tough minded, but very impulsive. Uh, he always, uh, he was actually a spokesman, and sometimes he spoke uh, out of turn. And uh, <clears throat> remember how Jesus walked uh, on water? and showing that uh, the sign that Jesus is the master of nature. And then uh, <clears throat> and Peter uh, uh, said to uh, our Savior, he said, Lord, if, if, if it is you, you know, <clears throat> bid me come <clears throat> unto thee <clears throat> on the water. Very, very impulsive. And yet he behaves like a coward. Uh, <clears throat> he behaves like a coward sometimes. Now, Peter sat outside in the palace, and the lady came by and said, hey, you also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all saying, I know not what you are saying. Because with the impulsive spirit in there, there's also fear. Then he acted like a coward. And then he began to deny. In fact, the Bible tells us he cursed and he swore uh, that he didn't know uh, Jesus Christ. Next. His character, his hot temper. Next. All right. <clears throat> Next uh, slide, my brother. Hot temper. All right. All right. You remember how our Savior was taken by uh, the uh, scribes and the soldiers in Sunday Fall and Peter, all right, for his self protection or uh, what it may be. 
uh, or because uh, he was angry and hot tempered and he he uh, he took a sword he drew it and in swing anyhow he smote the high priest servant and cut off his right ear and uh, and our savior rebuked him and says put away your sword and our savior then took the ear and put it back again and so hot temper but yet he was also tender hearted and what tender hearted mean he was sensitive when you remember the word of Jesus, who has said before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times, he went out and wept bitterly. He was sensitive, wept bitterly. He didn't enjoy sinning away. I mean, he didn't go there to sin, you know, to deny Jesus Christ. He was go down there to see what's happening. And yet, you know, when he sinned, he wept bitterly. Next now, we see he was insightful, all right? He was insightful, and yet he was half-witted. Half-witted means foolish, a little bit what we call stupid. And uh, how do we know he's insightful? Because when Jesus uh, asked Israel, who do people think that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son <clears throat> of the living God. So he make a positive statement. He was insightful for that. But he was what we call foolish in this. Why? Because our Savior told him again and again now, in fact, six times he talked to the disciples. He told them he, he, he will suffer many things. He'll be killed. He'll be raised up again the third day. Then what happened? Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Here you think about it, you know, how foolish Peter should have been, could have been. He rebuked Jesus Christ. He said, be far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. Uh, <clears throat> the servant trying to rebuke the master. Uh, and, and, and she might be insightful in some time, but in this case now, he was what we call half witter, he was foolish. And then let's look at his character now. Yes, he was a spokesman. Next slide. Uh, <clears throat> we look at his leadership style, all right? But uh, <clears throat> it was still what we call uh, uh, <clears throat> earthly and sinful. For example, he could be insightful and say, oh, you know, uh, <clears throat> thou art the Christ, the son of the one living God. He can make some bold statement like that. My friend, bold statement doesn't make us what we call godly servant leadership. We, we know, for example, Jonah himself, you know, he uh, wanted to do his own will. And though he, he, he could say and, and, and do a bold statement and say, you know, Lord, I know that you are, are merciful and compassionate. And yet, uh, he, 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 there was no what we call life changing. And, and, and he went around disobey God and he didn't want God to go and save the people and then away. My friend, sometimes we can have principles and we follow principle, but the person behind the principle is not there. You see, Jesus is not there. His heart is not there. His spirit is not there. His love is not there. And so Peter could say, you know, uh, uh, make a bold statement. And so be careful, my friend, of, uh, of, <clears throat> of even a bold biblical statement. And yet we need to know Jesus himself, who is aware of the truth in the life, and know him, who, who he is, and what he can do, instead of trying to use this, you know, to try to uh, uh, show how smart we are, and so on. And then came Peter to and said, Lord, I talk about forgiveness now. How often shall my, uh, my brother sin against me and I forgive him to seven times? Uh, now he's talking about forgiveness, you know. And spokesman, the leadership style that he had there was very, very <clears throat> negative. All right. And he was very self-confident and say, wow, well, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm going to forgive him. Uh, seven times a day, isn't great. Uh, that should be enough, right, Lord? So that kind of uh, uh, stuff. 
But there is another thing now. When a rich young man came and he went away sorrowful, uh, then our, our Savior, uh, 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 Peter, uh, answered and asked uh, uh, Jesus and said, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? So here was materialistic uh, 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 spokesman. Here was, it's, it's, it's not a, a what we call slave leadership and not godly at all. And uh, here was a materialistic, he's, uh, Peter was just saying, hey, you know, uh, what's there for us, you know? Uh, he's there for, for, for money, you know, for honor, for prestige and possession and so forth. All right, next slide now. And yet, <clears throat> courageous and solid after Pentecost. All right, courageous and solid. Again, we thank God for a divine executive. We are not alone. And, uh, and, and God gave us the Holy Spirit for strength and for boldness. And when they stayed, came before the council, and, uh, and then the, the council told them uh, not to, uh, not to uh, preach Jesus Christ anymore, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than what? Men. Right? Now, Look, let's look now, the scandal, all right? The scandal, or the, the, the process of uh, what we call uh, brokenness, all right? Now, remember, Peter was the most prominent, uh, all right? Okay, he was first mentioned, as we talk about, and uh, he denied Jesus Christ three times outright, all right? And he sinned even more because he cursed and he swore. Just like, you know, those crude uh, <clears throat> fishermen in all, all those days and so on. So we need to guard, all right? Notice the serious, scandalous nature of his life. All right, need to guard against the sin, sin of the spirit, lies, anger, theft, corrupt words, bitterness, evil speaking, and malice. The sin of the flesh, adultery, <clears throat> sexual sin, uncleanness idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, strife, rebellion, envying, murder, drunkenness, and uh, <clears throat> revelings, and so on. Those can be a pattern that will enslave our life. And, uh, you know, and <clears throat> we need to be guard against that. Number two, next now, he did not lose his salvation. All right? Salvation is by the grace of God. All right, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us that uh, <clears throat> that is by the grace of God we are saved. It is uh, 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 of faith and not of works, lest, lest any man should boast. And in 2 Corinthians 7 tells us he had godly sorrow that works repentance unto salvation. It is not like Judas, you know, they had a sorrow of the world that workers death. But there's a lot of joy. He wept bitterly. The fellowship was lost. He went back fishing. The testimony, the trust was broken. But yet, thank God, in Psalm 51, verse 12, he, the cry of even King David, Restore unto me the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and sin that is covered. Blessed. A person to be congratulated, congratulated. The person that uh, is being blessed is those that have the transgression forgiven and sin that is covered. And we praise God for that. Now, look at a scandal now. Next now, we begin to see one thing now as we look at it. He was a victim of the attack of Satan. Because you see, he was the first, all right, <clears throat> among the twelve. And so uh, the, the devil uh, wants to attack uh, him. And when the devil can attack Peter, he could get the rest. Because that's what later happened, you see. Because after Peter had sinned, and then uh, <clears throat> he went back fishing, and the other disciples went fishing with him. He, he, he still have that, what we call uh, that uh, authority over the other disciples. And let us see now, 
the Lord himself prophesies him. The Lord says, Simon, Simon, our Savior now called Simon by his original name. He didn't call him Peter, Peter, because Peter, Peter is called Rock, Rock. But now Simon, Simon is no more rock. He's going to be like sand. He calls Simon twice again is to emphasize to Simon. Simon, Simon, are you listening or not? Behold, look away from what's happening. Look, look what I'm going to tell you. Look at me, look at me. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to prophesy to you this. Satan, Satan the deceiver, Satan the adversary, Satan the accuser of the brethren, a desire to have you, that he may see you as wheat. So Satan has his desire, all right? Because he wants to save you as wheat. Because he's going to find that, you know, that uh, actually you can be like chef, chef, S-H-A-F-F, -F, that the wind will blow away, that you are very weak in that, in that way. So there's a solemn warning in the Bible so that we need to realize it. We can, must not be ignorant about it. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, Paul says it this way, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The word wrestle, Paul is using a wrestling time. Wrestling is something we have uh, what we call a close fight, close encounter. When you wrestle somebody, it's a close encounter. So we're not <clears throat> wrestling against human beings, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual weaknesses in high places. These are different levels, different ranks. The principalities and the powers are primarily with the nations. And the rulers of the darkness of this world has to do with uh, <coughs> those other what we call uh, uh, groups, people group and rebel and so forth, the darkness of this world. The spiritual weaknesses in high places had to do with religious uh, uh, demons and so on. And uh, they are trying to thwart God's plan. Like, for example, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Potiphar's uh, wife tried to trap Joseph. Haman tried to destroy Israel in the days of Esther and the queen. And uh, <clears throat> But we try to remember this now that they are created by Jesus, Colossians 1.16. Jesus is the head, Colossians 2 uh, verse 10. And Jesus in Colossians 1.15, disarm them on a cross. In 1 Corinthians 15.24, Jesus put down all, put an end uh, to all principalities and power. And so, my friend, Satan is limited by God's care. Next, uh, uh, next slide. So that Jesus know boy, uh, and and uh, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> uh, God rules and overrule. We remind in Job chapter one and verse uh, chapter two, uh, Satan has to come before God's permission uh, to 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 seek permission from God uh, to harm uh, Job and the children. And so when uh, and the Lord said uh, to Simon, Simon, Simon. Satan had this desire. Satan is asking me for permission. And permission was granted with holy reason. And if a character growing, like for example, Joseph, he has go through a, a process of a growth in his character. He went through treachery. He went through a temptation. He went through disappointment. Now he went through a bitterness. He went through a success without corruption and so on. Praise God for that. Our Savior rules and overrules. And uh, we're reminded in Psalm 76 verse 10, the wrath of man could even bring forth the praise of God. And the rest of the wrath, God will restrain. And God takes a very bad and he turns it all for his glory. 
he sometimes allows what he hates to do what he desires. He allowed our Savior up on the cross where Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? To what reason? And God allows that which is hate, our Savior, die for your sins and my sins on the cruel, shameful, painful cross. And so that Jesus who cried out, Tetelestai, it is finished. Sin has been paid for. You and I can be free from our sin forevermore. And so that is God's desire that Jesus will see the travail of his soul and be satisfied when Jesus prayed for you and for me and his prayer has been answered. You and I came to believe and trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus is satisfied and God has his desire. But you know, when you look and read, uh, Peter need not sin. Why? Because Jesus said to them and said, that, and said, why are you sleeping? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see what happened is this Jesus gave us the resources. The resources is this. Watch, be diligent, be sober, and stay awake. All right, and, and be vigilant and then pray for God's help. The battle, my friend, is already uh, won. If we stay awake and we pray with God's help, or else the battle is lost before the crisis comes. And so for Peter, it was already lost because he was not vigilant. He was not sober. He was uh, asleep and discouraged and despondent. And he failed to pray. Now, so next now, we see the restoration coming at Arnold. A again, we see that. All right. <clears throat> now, the kind of nature, because you and I have a depraved heart, the sin that dwelleth in us, the, <clears throat> the flesh, they fight against the spirit. You see, it's bad enough. There's an enemy outside Satan. But worse, why? Because there's an enemy within our carnal nature. The sin that dwells in us, the things we like to do, we don't have the strength to do it, the things we hate to do, that which we do. Why? Because sin dwells in us. And the self-confidence that we have, the ambitious the ambition that we have, the self-preservation that we have, uh, the power struggle, what it may be, and so on. And so the scripture reminds us then that we are tempted. Why? Because we are drawn away of our own lusts. All right? We need to check ourselves. All right? Then we entice. Then when the lust have conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth what we call death. You see, the Bible tells us this now, that when we believe in Jesus Christ, we have what we call the old man, uh, the new man that is in us. All right? <clears throat> that we have what we call partakers of the divine nature. Although that is the old man that is still in us, and that is a flesh in us, but <clears throat> there is a new man that is in us. Now, if the new man are going to win, then we have to starve the old man. There was a missionary that came by uh, to the Indian chief. The Indian chief just trusted and believed in Jesus Christ. And the missionary said to the Indian chief and said, how? Uh, everything okay? He said, me no good. He said, me inside. Uh, white dog and black dog fighting away. So the missionary said, who is winning? He says, sometimes the uh, old dog seem to win all the time. Well, if you want the old dog to win, uh, to, to lose, what must you do? Uh, you must learn to starve the old dog. All right? Starve the old man. Starve the old dog. And then you need to feed the what? Feed the new man. All right? 
And what do we do? How do we feed the new man? How we how do re, how do we uh, uh, <coughs> renew our mind? So he says to uh, the Indian chief, and he said, "I want you to see this basket right here, all right? And it's very dirty. I want you to take that basket, and then <coughs> you run down to that river down there, and then you uh, shake the basket in the river, and uh, and bring the basket back to me." And so the Indian chief uh, did just that. He ran over with that, and he took back. Uh, he took the uh, basket back to the. Uh, uh, to the uh, <clears throat> missionary, and he's wondering what's happening. The missionary said, go, go ahead, do one more time. And he went over and did another time, and do one more time, and did another time, and so on. And then the, the missionary said, look, look now, look at the basket. You see now the basket had been washed, or the dirt inside the basket had been washed away. And so when you read the Bible, when you feed the word of God, it will clean up your life. Wherewithal shall a young man clean up his way by taking heed of the word of God. So the more you feed your life with the word of God, it will clean up your life. It will build up your life. Uh, it, is, it, is, <clears throat> it is like milk that we drink. It is like a bread uh, that we eat. It is like meat uh, when we become stronger in so on and so forth. You'll be like fish, so that we become fisher of men. So, my friend, starve the old man, but feed the <coughs> new man. Now, next, now, uh, the uh, next uh, slide overpowering circumstances, all right, sorrow and discouragement. He could not understand why Jesus had to die. Had to die. Remember this now. Uh, he said to Jesus, no, this will not happen. Six times Jesus told them again and again. So he was heartbroken and sorrowful. So that means that he was disconnected with God. You see, the thing to, uh, to understand is that we, 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 we got to uh, love God's word, immerse ourselves with God's word, and see life from God's perspective. And sometimes when we go to suffering and sort of all, we need to realize that even from people, we need to realize that even men and many for uh, our our uh, for, for evil, but God will mean it for good, so that we don't get discouraged. Because once we are sorrowful and discouraged and heartbroken and so on, uh, we begin to get angry. We begin to uh, use our own uh, courage, to use our own strength, and trying to find our way out. And so that you know we are in a hole instead of trying to dig deeper into the hole, we get out of the hole, come out, get out, get up, and turn to Jesus. And God will give us his courage and his strength. Remember those resources they want to use, the lack of prayer. So let us, uh, you be lack of prayer, you become an easy victim. All right, then put on whole armor of God. The God of truth, breastplate of righteousness, live right, choose uh, with the preparation of the gospel, use the shield of faith, right? Helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, use God's word, and praying always, praying without ceasing, persistent prayer, consistent prayer, all right? And Satan tremble, my friend, when he sees us on our knees. We must pray up. We must pray now. We must pray without ceasing for his presence, for his protection, and for his provision. Next, <clears throat> we see now, uh, the other thing that happened now, we see the, the problem that he faces. Next. Next slide, brother. Okay. He sat with the wrong company. All right. Wrong place. Surrounded by enemies, surrounded by those who are ungodly, surrounded by those who are sinners, surrounded by those who are scorners. You see, and he was falling afar off. You see, and uh, instead of being close to Jesus, but afar off, fearful, you know, and uh, <coughs> and uh, cowardly and so on and so forth. Uh, and then he was surrounded by enemies. Be careful, my friend, of bad company. 
bad company will corrupt you. Yes, my friend, we are not isolationists, but we, we, we but we, uh, you know, we are, yes, in the world, but we're not of the world. But so you be careful when you spend too much time with those who are ungodly, with those people who are sinning, 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 because you're going to be like them after a while. You'll be with those who gossip, 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 gossip. They will be gossiping. You'll be start gossiping. You'll be though with those that said bad words, bad words, bad words. You'll be saying bad words and so on and forth. And so two cannot walk together unless they what? <clears throat> Agree. Then what happened? Wrong relationship. Wrong fire. Wrong crowd. Warm himself. Uh, with a false fire, with a raw kind of relationship. Because you will read an example of uh, of Samson and Delilah. All right, wrong company. Lord in Sodom, all right, Lord wanted to have possession and position and prestige and so on and forth. He was with the unrighteous people. And so therefore, uh, he was unhappy in that, that place on there. My friend, it is not we are completely free from sin. But when we sin, we'll be like Sodom. We will be unhappy. We'll not enjoy our sin in sinning. We'll learn what it is to weep what we call bitterly. Now, thank God. Let's look at that, the prayer of the Lord. Praise God for that. Now, I love this. this the, our Lord said to him, Simon, Simon. Next uh, uh, slide, my brother. Simon, Simon. Behold. Look. Listen carefully to me. All right? Now, uh, Satan had desired to have you that he may save you as with, but, 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 I love that. But I have what? Pray for you. But I have prayed for you <laughs> that your faith fail not. And when I have converted, strengthen thy brother. But I fail for you. While well, we were yet sinners, but, God commanded us his love while we were yet sinners, while we were without strength, while we were ungodly, while we were enemies of God. But, 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 command, God commanded us love. But I have prayed for thee. Now, uh, that is one what we call God, the Lord's unfinished work, more or less. Hebrews 4 reminds us, that our Savior Jesus Christ was touched with the feelings of our infirmities and yet without sin. And so because of that, you know, we can come boldly in the throne of grace and find mercy and find grace in time of our need. And the Bible says in the Hebrews 7.25, the Lord is able to save us to the uttermost. Why? Because he ever liveth to make intercession for us. My friend, he is still praying for you and for me. And his prayer is always answered. Jesus did not give him up. Jesus did not let Peter go. Jesus said, I am praying for you. Jesus will never let you go and never let me go. All right. So then we need to pray for one another. Why? Because we are taking the ministry of our Savior also. And prayer is love on its knees. Prayer, my friend, has power. Why? Because prayer is as powerful as God is powerful. And when we pray, we bring people to God to help them. And our <clears throat> all-powerful God will help people. Next now. Now we begin to see the brokenness that came in there. And Peter had what we call new growth. He wept bitterly. All right. He did not want to sin. But he was distressed after sinning. There was godly sorrow, trouble, and penitence. We think of Lord in Sodom. The Lord delivers him. David in Psalm 51, he sinned but there was no enjoyment of sin at all. And he cried out, there was sin before me, and, uh, <clears throat> and there was the cost of the joy of salvation. He was cleansed. Uh, he was, uh, <clears throat> you know, renewed again. All right? And God works in it. Number, the next one, number three, 
and God make use of circumstances, all right? And God make use of what we call animals, all right? Uh, next slide, my, my friend. <clears throat> next slide, uh, uh, Cornelius, all right? They make use of animals. In the past, we have Balaam and the S, and then we have uh, Elijah and Ravens. In this time, the Lord used the rooster. Ah, the Lord used the rooster and told the rooster when to crow. The fish, the Lord used the fish when to stay away. All right. And then what happened is this then. <clears throat> all right. Uh, Jesus personally sought out Peter. By that time, you know, Peter quit. Then he went back fishing to supply the needs. And then, as usual, he caught he caught nothing at all, all right? But later on, what happened is this. Uh, <clears throat> when Jesus came, he caught 153 great fishes. You know, my friend, Lord, the Lord is busier than you think. The Lord is busier than I think. And then, my friend, the Lord is closer to you and to me than you think and I think. Not for once, not for once, God has left you alone. God has left me alone. Amen. And so, when after Jesus personally sought Peter, he talks out to him about two things. First of all, back to the first love. Do you love me? First love. Aha. That's it, my friend. It's not a matter of just principle or theology or standard, you know, or training or skill. It's a matter of the heart. Do you love me? And then back to God's heart. Are you interested in what I'm interested in? Feed my lamb. Feed my sheep. Let's look at it. And then we find now, uh, <clears throat> the next slide, my brother. Okay. Now, <clears throat> do you love me more than this? Uh, all right. We have what we call levels of love. Emotional love. Experience it when, uh, when, uh, when uh, the Lord uh, asks uh, Peter, said, do you love me more than this? Oh, oh you know, the fishers. Uh, the 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 uh, the netting, the, the fishing, or uh, uh, all your friends, what, your relationship, whatever it means. Did you love me for all this? Yeah, I, I, the, I, I think Peter must be experiencing the hurt of the questioning. Now that will intensify awareness and uh, sensitiveness because Jesus asked him three times: Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Just like he denied Jesus Christ three times. It seems that God, you know, has to remind us. And sometimes has to bring to events and situation. And so that we'll learn how to have a greater intimacy with him. Through God's word and through suffering and through temptation and, and through our victory and so on. That we have a larger, larger capacity to love him more and love people more. That we have an enlarged capability uh, with skills and knowledge and wisdom that we be able to preach the gospel and bring others to the saving knowledge of our Savior Jesus Christ. So there's a need for awareness. Do we love him? Uh, do remember the church at Ephesus? They can be uh, doing all kinds of things, but the church had left that first love. My friend, we have to ask the Holy Spirit to pour his love into your heart and my heart, that his love will control us, that will restrain us, that will constrain us, that will propel us, that will push us out uh, into the world that need the Lord Jesus Christ. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep again the second time. All right? Uh, this sheep, my friend, uh, Jesus said, we all like sheep. Uh, men are like sheep. They're going to stray. Then we turn other people uh, astray too. 
Sheba and Kemt, they're dirty, they're awkward, they're pushy, they, are, they go astray. They are almost impossible to shepherd. But thank God, uh, 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 <clears throat> they are impossible to exalt, exhaust God's love in us and through us. And when we have the love of God flowing in and through us, when we, he will give us the power uh, to know and to do his will, the capacity to do his will, and uh, nothing, nobody, no lamb, no sheep can exhaust God's love in and through us. Restoration, leadership, and preaching. Remember, he preached boldly after Pentecost. Next one. Next slide. <clears throat> Uh, all right, 3,000 were slave, uh, were saved. Those added, there was modification and addition. He preached to the Gentiles, all right? Uh, he had a prejudice before, but thank God, uh, God took away his prejudice. He wrote first and second Peter, all right? And uh, he warned us about Satan and the trials. And then uh, the gospel in Mark actually has been some, uh, I believe, has been actually the gospel of uh, uh, Saint, uh, Saint Mark is actually the gospel of Saint Peter. Let's look at some uh, reflection together. Look at some reflection. Ready? Number one. Ready? No matter what my previous experiences, Jesus can use me to serve Him. Amen. All right. Whether good or bad. All right. The ups and downs of life, whatever is on the fourth. And no matter what sin and sinning, whatever and so on, God can use us, still can use us to serve him. So am I yielding to him as he transformed me and used me? So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So starve the old man, all right, and then feed the new, transform. All right, you are metamorphosized. Why? Because God is going to change your mind, renew your mind, transform your mind. All right? And you're living and give you strength and power. Next, it takes, uh, next slide. It takes time and event to become what he desired for my maturity. What step and I take, am I taking to forget the past and then to reach upward? Our Apostle Paul the last, uh, what we call years, few years of his life. And yet he said, brother, I count it not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things that are before, I press toward the mark for the price of high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, I, 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 I. So you must make room for personal growth. Self-care is so very important, my friend. And then be a long time, long life, continuing learner. I'm so glad that many of you are in this uh, uh, Zoom meeting and so on. And we'll send up the, uh, the uh, Zoom audio to others. But be a long life, continuing learner. He said, this thing, this thing I do. All right, he's a one thing man. What is it? He said, I'm going to forget those things that are behind. I'm going to continue reaching for, all right, and do those things that are before. Reaching for, keep on going, lifelong going. You know, some of us, you know, are just, you know, taking care of ourselves, but we're not risking it. We're not reaching for. Actually, this actually has idea of, uh, <clears throat> of, uh, uh, of a person uh, uh, running away, uh, running a race. When you're running a race, you are not going to worry about what is behind you. You are now reaching for, you are straining for, straining for, keep on going, all right? And then that is a pr there's a prize waiting for you at the end of it. And that prize, as the scripture reminds us, are crowns, all right, crowns. Uh, the uh, the crown of life for those who are suffering, the crown of incorruptible crown that those that master their life, the crown of uh, righteousness, those who are youthful and those who are godly, 
the crown of rejoicing are for soul winners, the crown of glory are for elders and pastors and those who are nurturing people. The, uh, the next slide, my friend. And so, my friend, we ask ourselves, reflect on it. What changes have taken place in my life since I became a Christian? There must be some changes. Think about it. But what changes now you need to make? What are some of goals in life? For me to live is Christ and to die is what? Gain. What are your priorities? All right? Uh, what are your basic motivation? Are we... Uh, basic motivation. Are, are we getting to know more about the length and the breadth and the height and the depth of Jesus Christ to allow God's love to uh, to uh, flow in and through me, to love God and to love people? What's my attitude towards God? What's your attitude to, towards myself? And what is our attitude toward other people? Great lessons from the Apostle Peter. Next is the assignment that we need to think about uh, uh, some of us that uh, need to think about it. And all of us actually got to need to think about it. But those doing their, what we call a uh, credit course, what three lessons have I learned from the studies? Three lessons. Please be detailed and uh, specific. All right, what three lessons? Okay. And you say, these are the three lessons and so the four ones. Right. What are the three blessings I want to share in my life? Uh, I want to share in my life. Okay, three blessings are you going to share it in your life, but also in your ministry. Okay, how you want to share it, and then how would you share it to whom and how by the grace of God? All right, and we praise God for that. <clears throat> okay, now let's, let's ask God, Lord, thank you. Thank you for you are love. And you have been so patient with my life and patient with all our lives, Lord. We ask from the, from the life of John, we pray, oh God, that we may learn to uh, allow your spirit to pour your love in and through us. And then we build a community of love that we may love God and love one another. That use us, Father, in our, uh, our diverse personality and giftedness. And then, uh, like Peter, oh Lord, help us to use, Lord, uh, uh, what you have given to us, uh, the, the diligence, the prayer, and uh, the word of God, Lord, so we can feed, Lord, and then trust uh, your prayer upon our life. Uh, and then our prayer for one another. Uh, and so that, Lord, uh, uh, that we may live life that will be glorifying to you that we may be a one thing, one thing man, one thing woman, that we want to forget the things that are behind us now, Lord. The defeats and the victories and the, the pros and the cons, the minus and the plus. And, and now we reach forward, we strain forward, Lord. And, and Lord, the surprise giving day, one day we'll stand before Jesus. You say to us, well done, the good and faithful servant. We don't want you to say to us, oh Lord, you have been slothful and wicked. We want you to say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over uh, little things. I will give you much and now enter into my presence. Then you have the crowns uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, <clears throat> the victor's crown and the crown of life, the crown of righteousness, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of glory, the incorruptible crown. And, and then we will cast these crowns, O oh Lord, at the feet of Jesus. And we'll say to Jesus, Lord, you are worthy to receive all glory and honor. For you have made us, and for your pleasure, you have made us. Lord, may all glory and praise be to you. Uh, for us, Lord, as your people. And for those that do not know Jesus even right now, Lord, may they come by simple repentance and faith and trust in Jesus. May you help us to use uh, whatever means may possible, Lord, and use us, O oh Lord, uh, with your love in and through us, constraining us, that we'll go to people that do not know Jesus Christ, to our loved ones, to our friends, to our neighbors, uh, <clears throat> to our working place, and 
and and and and to the marketplace and whatever it may be, O oh Lord, that others may know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for this lesson today. May you enable us and help those and do it for credit, Lord, that you will have mercy upon them too, Lord. It will not be just a matter of head knowledge. We don't want to learn some facts. We don't want to learn some story. We don't want to learn some principles. But above all, Lord, we want to see Jesus. And after seeing Jesus, we want to love him and we want to tell others about Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you today. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now is a little testimony time. Amen.